This is the CPU puzzle. It has these eight bars that go through the centerpiece. And there's a couple of tricks to getting this one. So we'll take it apart and look at all the tricks and see exactly how this one works. All right, so the first part is gonna be real easy. All we have to do is take off these little elastic bands that's holding this one on and get that first probe out. And then everything kind of just falls right apart. So now the real trick is putting this all back together and uh, let's try to do that. So before we put this all back together, let's take a look here. We have some dots that are lower and some dots that are higher. The lower ones are actually gonna be the horizontal ones and the higher ones are gonna be the vertical one. And we'll see why this is important in just a second. Now, if we take a closer look at all these rods, we do have some gaps in the middle of them. And some of those gaps are the same amount where you have three gaps and then this one here is three gaps but sometimes they can be in a bit of a different placement. If we flip that around, we'll see that it's in a different placement. So what we wanna do is first of all, get the horizontal uh, ones lined up, I guess, right? So let's use the three, two, one, four. So let's get a three, let's get a two, let's get a one and a four. Four is the big cojone, there we go. So what we wanna do now is, is make sure that, first of all, these are gonna be the horizontal ones. So turn them just like that. And we want to make sure that all these little ridges are actually on the left. So this two does not look like it's on the left. Let's flip it around and put it right there. And then you can tell that it's the leftmost is gotten two lined, two lined up gaps and the right one has uh, one gap and no gap. And then we do the one and the one is supposed to be on the left as well. But if we look over here, there is another one which has a leftmost gap or a more left gap, I suppose. So if we actually flip that around, we'll see that this one on the top is more to the left than this one on the bottom. So let's get rid of that one on the bottom because we want the leftmost ones. And this four, there isn't another four. So that is gonna be fine, just like that. And now we wanna make sure that that two is good. So we compare this two with the middle two. And this one is more left, so let's switch that one as well. So now up here we have a three, a two, a one, and a four. And for the uh, vertical side, we're gonna go with zero. One, two, three. So really straightforward. So this is the zero right on the left. The one is right here and we want to line up each one on the bottom. So we want the divots the closest to the bottom. So we go zero, one, two, except for the three. The three we want to actually up more up, uh, up high. So there we go. Now that we did the most annoying part of rearranging everything, we have a very, very specific order that we actually want to put this back in. So to start off with, we're going to take the H4 we're going to call this, so horizontal 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going to put this one in. And the reason why we put this one in first is because it has four gaps. So when we slide this one in, we'll be able to put four verticals in without any, any hitches. So we're going to do mostly this with the square down, but just notice that that's what you're doing inside is you're making it all line up perfectly, just like that. And now when this lines up perfectly, you want to put the next one in, which is going to be the V4. And the V4 is going to be put in because you have three open gaps on the side here, and this one has three open gaps. So now we want to carefully slide this one in, but we also want to turn those gaps so that they're upside down because this one uh, on the vertical side is the higher piece. So let me show you what I mean here. If we slide it over, you can see that we need those gaps to line up. If it was facing upwards, it would look like that. So we need it facing down. Oh, now that just slid out. Let's try and do this again with it. It's not standing up. This is where the tricky part comes in because you can't actually pick it up and have it work for you really. It's a, it's a lot more annoying too. So now that we're done that, the next part would be to do H1 because that's got three gaps on it. So let's do H1. Now let's keep the gaps up in the air and the gaps are going to be on the left side, which is exactly what we want. We'll slide this one in. You might have problems with it because this one, but you can just kind of spin it around until it works. And then the easy part here is keep those gaps up and match it completely up with the fourth one down here. And then you know exactly where it is and it's all going to match up. So now the next one's going to be the vertical three, I guess. <laughs> so when we stick this one in, it's got two open gaps. And on this one, we have two left. So we're going to stick that in. And we're going to turn the dots or the, the blanks there down. Blanks. Oh, geez, the ridges. We're going to turn them down. And we're going to match it up just like so. And after that, we're going to put in the H2. 
You guessed it. The one with two gaps because there's two spots left. So we're gonna put this in the second position. I'm gonna slide it all the way over until it matches up with everything else. And then we're gonna put the V2 in, which is the one with one position because we have one empty spot left. So put that in, turn the empty spot, the gap down and slide it in. I'm calling those things something else, I swear. Every single time I say something, it's uh, I'm calling it something else. Gap, ridge, opening, bevel. Don't really know what they're called, but I'll make something work. So next thing is this final horizontal piece. Stick it in there and make sure that the gap is facing upward and see if this goes in perfectly. And it does. We got lucky this time. And now we have the last one, which is this empty rod. And stick that empty rod in there. Should go in, no problem. Now the biggest thing here is to put those elastics on before you pick it up, otherwise everything will fall right back down and you'll have to do it all again. So now that we have that done, the uh, CPU is reassembled. And if you like this kind of puzzle, let me know. I do have the uh, the one kit where it comes with a lot more of these types of puzzles. Um, so yeah, I can do some more. Thanks for watching. See ya.